assalamu alaikum student today uh, in this video we are solving chapter number 6 that is classical fred home theory and we will discuss about the fred home first fundamental theorem and our main focus will be finding uh, the resolvent kernel using fred home determinant i have used two different methods to solve this question the first one is this one i will explain it in detail and the second one is the alternative method to find the resolvent kernel alternative method is more easier than the first one i will tell you both but before moving on to that example you must know what formulas we are going to use in that example that is a fred home first fundamental theorem you have to consider the non homogeneous fred home integral equation of second kind this is non homogeneous fred home integral equation of second kind where the functions f of x and y of t are integrable has a unique solution and what's its solution if sometimes they ask you to find the solution then you your solution will be y of x is f of x plus lambda integration from a to b resolvent kernel f of t dt so our main purpose is finding the resolvent kernel once we found the resolvent kernel we can use its value here and we'll get the solution and how we can find the resolvent kernel the formula for resolvent kernel is d x t lambda divided by d of lambda where d of lambda can not be zero because it's a denominator denominator can never be zero now for finding resolvent kernel you need these two values and for these two values you must know what's their formulas t of x t lambda is k of x t your kernel from your question summation p is equals to 1 to infinity minus lambda raised to power p over p factorial integrations k of x z1 until zp t z1 until zp d z1 until d z p and d of lambda is 1 plus summation p is equals to 1 to infinity minus lambda raised to power p over p factorial integrations k of z1 until z p z1 until z p d z1 until d z p what basically this looks very really difficult but it's not difficult i will explain each and everything how you are going to find this in your in your example that is explained here both equations converges for all values of lambda also now you can see that this value k of x z1 until zp t z1 until zp this k and this k is some unique determinant and what's that determinant i have explained here in the next page how we can write k of x1 x2 until xn t1 t2 until tn we can write it in the form of a determinant k of x1 t1 x2 t1 until xn t1 k of x1 t2 x2 t2 x3 t2 until xn t2 k of x1 tn x2 tn x3 tn and until xn tn which is known as the fred home determinant now what's the working rule finally we are what formulas we are going to use to solve the example you have to consider your non homogeneous fred home integral equation where resolvent kernel is given by this formula and d of x t lambda is given by this formula and d of lambda is given by this formula you need to memorize these formulas now you must know what is your bm and what is your cm the formula for bm is this determinant that i wrote here within the formula i have written now in your working rule separately so that you may be clear how we are going to use it k of x t x z1 x till z n z1 t z1 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 z n and so on and you must know the value of cm cm is integrations from a to b and this determinant d of x t lambda is fred home minor and d of lambda is fred home determinant so that was our working rule let's just solve the example so that everything will be clear to you using fred home determinant you have to find the resolvent kernel and they have given you already the kernel x e raised to power t a is equals to 0 b is equals to 1 okay now for finding the resolvent kernel you need d's these two and for these two d's you need bm and cm it means you need b1 b2 b3 and so on and you need c1 c2 c3 and so on so first of all we are going to find b1 integration is from 0 to 1 okay this is b1 
when they are talking about b1 it is going to be one integral when they are talking about b2 it's going to be two integrals so for b1 for b1 integration will be one times zero to one and your determinant is until z1 your determinant is reduced until z1 this one two cross two determinant i have written here k of x t x z1 z1 t z1 z1 see the column t z1 and in row you have x and z1 and z1 and integration is with respect to dz1 okay k of x t k of x t is x e raised to power t k of x z1 so it will be x e raised to power z1 k of z1 t so it will be z1 e raised to power t z1 e raised to power z1 now you have to find this determinant how we can find the determinant you have to multiply this diagonal these two minus these two elements of the diagonal and they you know that they both are same so it will it's going to be zero now let's find the b2 for the b2 you have to write your determinant until z2 so it will be your 3 cross 3 determinant and integrations will be two times dz1 until dz2 now you are going to plug in all these values here using your kernel given in your question here you are just going to replace these terms with these variables and you will get this now you have to expand your 3 cross 3 determinant and you know very well how to expand the 3 cross 3 determinant here i have not expanded it using the proper determinant method it's a lengthy one i can see that there are something common you can see here in your first column e raised to power t is common so i took it common in your second column e raised to power here you have z1 it's c1 e raised to power z1 is common so i have took it common i have taken it common then e raised to power zt from third column so you are left with this determinant now you can see that from your first row you can take x common from your second row you can take z1 common and from third row you can take z2 common i am basically solving here right now using the rules of determinants because it's going to be more easier if you know how to solve it otherwise you can manually solve it using the determinant method of 3 cross 3 by expanding it through r1 now you know the rules of determinant if the two rows or two columns are same the determinant is going to be zero so if this determinant is zero everything goes to zero so you see b1 is zero b2 is zero so it means all the bn of xt is zero for n is greater or equals to 1 now we are going to calculate cns same formula for c1 you know that cn you have to write until z1 so you are just left with k of z1 z1 dz1 so you are going to plug in the value you know that k of xt is x e raised to power t just replace the values with z1 z1 here z1 e raised to power z1 integrated by parts apply the limits of integration you will get finally here 1 now we are going to write c2 for c2 you have to write until z2 so 2 cross 2 determinant will come here and integrations two times so you will just put the values here uh, find the determinant integrated you will get zero it means uh, later on all the cns are going to be zero for m greater or equals to 2 not 1 why because at 1 you have some value so you are going to have the value 0 for m greater or equals to 2 now we are going to find d of x t lambda and d of lambda i have written the formula formula was d of x t lambda was k of x t plus this thing k of x t is x e raised to power t and you know that all the b ends are zero so if this goes to zero everything goes to zero so the d of x t lambda is x e raised to power t now write the formula of d of lambda you know that for cm the c1 is non zero so just expand this some values first of all write this whole value for 1 then plus 
write this value for 2 and so on. And you know that you got the value of C1 and C1 was 1. So just plug in the value C1 as 1, C2 as 0 and all other values are going to be 0. So you are left with here D of lambda is 1 minus lambda. So write the formula of resolvent kernel. Put the value of d of x t lambda here that is x e raised to power t. Put the value of d of lambda here that is 1 minus lambda. So that was the way of finding the resolvent kernel using the Fred Home determinant. Now there is another alternative method as well for calculating the BM and CM. You know that this was this determinant is difficult to open. All these determinants, see there are lots of determinants here. These are difficult to open, difficult to handle as well. So we also have an alternative method. You can follow this alternative method as well. And what is that alternative method? For that alternative method, you need to memorize just these formulas. Take always C0 as 1, Cp as this one. Integration from A to P, B P minus 1 SS DS for P greater or equals to 1. D0 of xt as K of xt and B P of xt as Cp whatever Cp you got here, Cp k of xt minus p integration from a to b k of xz bp minus 1 zt dz for p greater or equals to 1. Now we are going to use the same example, same example with this new alternative method. What was the formula? Your C0 is going to be 1, your B0 is going to be k of xt x e raised to power t. And your, the formula for Cp was this. So first of all, let's find C1. I have taken P as 1. So when I plug in P as 1, I will get here B0. And you know that what is B0? B0 is x e raised to power t. B0 of SS will be s e raised to power s. Integrated by parts, apply the upper and lower limit, you will get this answer. Now, let's find the B1. For finding the B1, you will use this formula. In place of P, I am going to use 1, 1. Here, 1 minus 1 is not, 0. Plug in the value of C1, you got, that is 1. Plug in the value of K of xt, P was 1. Okay, K, plug in the value of K of xz, plug in the value of B0 of zt, dz. Just simplify it, integrate it by parts and apply the upper and lower limits, you will get the answer as, here as 0. Okay, you found the C1, you found the B1, now let's find the C2, then we will find B2. For C2, it's going to be B1 of SS. See, for C2 you got B1 of SS and you know that you got B1 as 0 here, see. You plugged in here, so C2 is 0, so it means all the C's are going to be 0. Now let's find the B2. For B2, I put the P as 2 here, P as 2, P as 2, here 2 minus 1 means B1. Just plug in all the values here, simplify and get B2 as 0. So what it means? It means C1 is 0 and all other CMs are 0 for M greater or equals to 2 and BM is 0. So let's, we are going to use now d d of lambda and r of xt the same formulas we used in the last example the rest of the procedure is same the only thing that is making easier here is these formulas of cp and bp they are not involving the determinants like the previous method now we use the same formula as before plug in the values and you will get here the resolvent kernel nothing is different now only the way of finding C1, C2, B1, B2 was different. Okay, now we are going to find D of lambda and D of xt lambda and hence we are going to solve the integral equation. And its solution is given on the book, page 6.13, we are going to solve it through book. We have to find D of lambda, we have to find D of xt lambda the same way we were doing before using our kernel. Right now the kernel is xt. Once we found the d of lambda and d of xt lambda, we have to solve the integral equation. Okay. Here is this example. You know that your f of x is right now e raised to power x and your k of xt right now is x raised to power t. 
the formula for resolvent kernel is d of x t lambda over d of lambda and you know that you have to write the formula of d of x t lambda you have to find write the formula of d of lambda the same formula i told you before okay i am going to use here for finding the c1 c2 and so on b1 b2 i am going to use the alternative method that was more easier c0 is 1 b0 was your k of x t write the formula of cp write the formula of bp same way i did here formula of cp formula of bp then we have to find c1 for c1 for c1 use this formula cp use p as 1 and use the value of b not of ss here integrate it you got this answer now we are going to find b1 of xt here is the formula of bp so put the p as 1 put the p as 1 so b1 of xt will be this formula just plug in the values integrate it and simplify so you can see that cps are all zeros for p greater or equals to 2 and bps are all zero for p is greater or equals to 2 now your d of xt lambda what was the formula of d of xt lambda it was k of xt plus summation bm you know that your b not is not zero you you have some value of b1 this is the value of b1 zero just open this summation open this summation minus lambda raised to power 1 over 1 factorial b1 of xt minus lambda raised to power 1 over 1 factorial b1 of xt plus minus lambda raised to power 2 over 2 factorial b2 of xt plus minus lambda 3 over 3 factorial b3 of xt just just we just opened it all of the b's are zero just use the value of k of xt here now use the formula of d of lambda open all these first of all plug in m as 1 so it's minus lambda 1 over 1 factorial c1 plus minus lambda square over 2 factorial c2 plus up to so on and plug in the values here and you know that the formula for resolvent kernel is d of xt lambda divided by d of lambda just use these values here that's it now they told you to solve it as well so you know that what's the solution solution is y of x equal f of x plus lambda integration from 0 to 10 r of x t lambda f of t dt just use the value of f of x use the value of f of t use the value of resolvent kernel and we are just going to integrate it simply integrate it by parts just simplify it each and every step and you you will get your solution this is your solution okay now you can try solving this example number 6 i will just send you the pictures which examples you have to solve there are many examples here in this chapter you can just try solving it because there is no exercise given like uh, for the questions uh, for your assignment you have to find the resolvent kernel of these two questions and the answer for resolvent kernels are also given you have to solve it after this video so that you may be able to practice it right now and get the answers where you are having the difficulty I hope so everything will be clear to you just practice the question number 1 and 2 and get these answers for the resolvent kernels